channel. If you are new, my name is Sheila and I'm so happy to have you here. And if you're not new, hello, welcome back friends. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a work vlog, but mostly centered on my work as an archivist and even more specifically working from home as an archivist but also i have some exciting presentations that i am working on and giving in the upcoming day and week so actually i have a presentation tomorrow which is very exciting and then i have another presentation next week so i've been working on my powerpoint presentations slide deck slideshows whatever you want to call them for both of them this week and since i get motivated to get stuff done when it's the last minute some people might call that procrastination i need to finish my present my slideshow for tomorrow so i should probably tell you what i'm actually presenting shouldn't i so tomorrow i am doing a basically public speaking to a public history undergraduate class at my undergraduate college. So the school that I went to and earned my history degree, I'm going to be speaking to history students about what I do as an archivist, which is seriously so fun. Like, it's amazing to be able to talk about yourself in front of people who are actually interested, which is very easy for me. So my former professor and mentor he always asks me to come speak to his class. I think this is the third time, or maybe even the fourth time, but the previous times I've actually gone there in person and presented it in front of the class, which is so fun, um, as well as anxiety inducing as somebody who is not naturally excited about speaking in front of a large group of people. Um, I always had anxiety when it came to that, but once I was up there doing it, it kind of <laughs> was okay. and. Whenever I would speak about topics that I was passionate about or talking about myself, it was a lot easier than speaking about a topic that I wasn't prepared for, I didn't have any information on, and was just kind of like, I don't know what to say. So I've done, I have years and years and years of experience of public speaking, and now even in my profession, currently I've done a lot of public spe speaking and also teaching as well, which is very fun. So that is my presentation that I actually need to finish today because I need to present it tomorrow. So I'll be taking you along during my presentation tomorrow as much as I can since I'm not going to like record the actual like Zoom interaction, but I'll try and like record like me <laughs> doing it. Um, so yeah, this morning I met with my former professor just to see if the Zoom link was going to work and we got to catch up. It's been, I think over a year we always seem to just keep in touch like at an annual level or whenever i have a career change so the last time we spoke uh i was telling him that i was thinking of quitting my nine to five which was my previous archival job and that i was thinking of moving and i was like yes that's exactly what has happened and that i'm also doing photography on the side and youtube so we caught up a bit which was fun and now I'm just even more excited to work my presentation. So we're going to be doing that this afternoon and I need to run to the UPS store and actually return something for my archives job. We like ordered a photo backdrop to take photos of objects and things and it came defected like one of the pieces was broken so we had to reorder a new one and return this one so I need to go return that one. It's currently in my car so we're gonna go to do that and then I'm gonna come back and work on and hopefully finish my presentation for tomorrow um, this morning I was working on my, a different presentation that's for next week which is more of a overview of the archives where I work at and just kind of giving information on the collections that we have what actually is archives and how to do archival research and we'll be specifically looking at a collection, a women's missionary society collection that is digitized and available online. So I'm going to be doing basically an overview of what our institution is, the collections we have, what an archives is, and we'll look at one 
collection specifically. So the students, I'm going to be speaking to a seminary class actually. It's graduate level. They're all studying uh, in seminary and they're, prof they're in a history class. So their professor, I've worked with her before as well, just loves collaborating <laughs> with me and other archives. Because I think, I mean, obviously I used to be a student and I, it is like so important to do primary research especially if you're in the history field and working and taking history classes so i have discovered that i even though i love teaching and never wanted to do like academic teaching or any kind of teaching i love i still love teaching but i love being able to teach like how to use archives and research using archival materials so i found i feel like i found kind of like my teaching sweet spot in the history field at least yeah this is just me rambling about being an archivist and my career so if that's something you're interested in and it's not boring to you keep watching okay so let's actually head out and go to the ups store do that return and then when i get back i'm just going to do a full sprint on my presentation because we need to get it done we need to get it done <laughs> so let's So I'm in the parking lot of UPS and just realized I don't think I can do the return because I need the QR code from my boss. It's an Amazon return and if you know how Amazon returns work, they're really simple if you have one, your Amazon account information and two, the QR code. QR code. So since I don't have either of those, there's no way I can go in there and be like, here, return this because I don't have anything to scan. So I just emailed my boss and i don't know if she'll be able to get back to me today the return is doesn't need to go back today it was just convenient for me to come out and do it but just letting you know that today's return adventure did not go according to plan so i'm gonna go back and get back onto my presentation <laughs> friends welcome to the next day so as we pick up from yesterday last night well last evening I finished up my presentation which I'll show you in a second it is almost 11 30 and my talk is at 12 but I need to get on the zoom call like 10 15 minutes beforehand um so I have not that much time to get back on I've actually been working on a client shoot this morning I'll show you that in a second so I'm really multitasking and doing like all the things because I also was uploading a YouTube video this morning so there's just been a lot of different things going on we had YouTube I'm finishing up my stock shoot now and now I need to transition into 
getting prepared mentally and physically for my presentation. So let me just show you my stock shoot situation. So I have my home studio <laughs> set up and we're just taking some really simple flat lays today. These are the same um, photos for my client Carla. If you saw my latest video that just went up, the one I published today, which is my photo studio vlog, these are the same client, same vibe, but I just needed to finish shooting some desk flat lays that I didn't get at the studio. And I actually like shooting at home, like these kind of flat lays at home anyway. I just I have more time to prepare and it's a lot more relaxing because I'm at home. So I'm grateful to have enough space and a window that allows me to kind of shoot at home. So my living room has turned into a photo studio. Here are some of the props that I have laid out. I just like setting everything out and then kind of picking and choosing as I go to figure out like what needs to just, what's gonna work. But I'm really happy with the layout that I got. I put this printable here and also her other printable, which is down here. So I used the same layout and I took some different, like took vertical shots, square shots and vertical shots. Um, I was planning to shoot like after my talk, but then I realized I had a bunch of time this morning. Let me actually flip you back around. So yeah, I was planning to sh do my client shoot like after my talk, but I ended up having like some extra time to get it done and I wanted to set up, I'm like running into a chair. I wanted to get my studio set up at least so I could kind of work on that th this afternoon, but I had time and these are just a few shots that I need to get and it was really easy to set up. So I think I'm gonna leave this set up and see if I can, if I feel inspired to create any other types of scenes after lunch. So right now I need to get out of photo photographer mode and go into archivist mode and I'm gonna show you my uh, presentation as well. So let's go to my office. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to show this without <laughs> giving away where I work, but here's the title slide, which I really love because this is actually a photo I took as a screenshot for one of my vlogs that I posted on here. So this is the agenda to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Really just sharing my story, what archivists do, and then career, vi career advice for aspiring archivists. So let me just go. Cause I know I get questions, I've gotten questions about like what I do like as an archivist, what my work day's like, and I'm gonna be doing a more in-depth video, actually multiple videos about my career journey and just more of what archivists do. I just, I'm in the planning and thinking stages about that. So I think doing this talk is gonna really inspire me and give me ideas to create videos because I worked on this presentation yesterday and have more of like an outline, but this gives you an idea of just what I do and every archivist is different depending where they work and every day looks different but that's kind of just the gist of what I do every day <laughs> so you can kind of see and there's different photos all from where I work there's me doing some historical research which is super fun and then here's just some like career advice about um, what I've learned and see from looking at job applications and just working in the field like what it really takes to become an archivist and like different kind of skills um like not just going to school and learning basic theory of archives but just like soft skills like you need to have excellent time management and project management skills you need to you know like people because you're going to be dealing with the public you need to be self-motivating because you're going to be working by yourself a lot but also like in a team environment and here's just some like basic advice. Now one thing I'm gonna share, and I'll share more of this like afterwards once I it actually comes out of my mouth, is I put, le don't put all your eggs in one basket and to leverage all your skills. I'm gonna be talking about my like other side income. Like they're, they're gonna hear about like how I'm also a photographer and how I started a YouTube channel and my advice just moving forward in the future in terms of career routes like 
we just can't all rely on one field or one source of income now, especially with everything that's going on. So I want to just kind of inspire people to leverage all of their skills. So maybe they're creative like me, see how they can, you know, make extra income off of like photography or blogging or stuff like that. So I'm really excited to share that on top of like my career just as an archivist uh, and then just some places to find jobs. So if you're watching this and you're an archivist or an aspiring archivist, let me know because I would love to connect more. Okay, the nerves are setting in. I'm gonna get on the Zoom call in a little bit, but my like hair looks a mess. I'm like disheveled. I think I'm gonna change my shirt. I'm just gonna like clean myself up for in like two minutes because the nerves are setting in. I think doing all of the like photo shoot this morning really helped distract me, but I'm just more excited than like anxious because it's on Zoom and it's definitely feels a lot more safe than actually like being in front of a class, like in a classroom. So wish me luck. I'm gonna do my best to record uh, as much as I can. The class is only 50 minutes, so I'm gonna try and keep my talk at a minimum so we can have a discussion at the end because I feel like that's really more important and fruitful for the students. So, let's do this. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here. This is strange on Zoom, but yeah, I'm gonna talk about just my archival career and a little bit about my background, educational background and what archivists do. So We're all living through a, a strange time. We all are living through a pandemic and I think everything that we've collected or created in the past year, whether it's a photo or if we have a journal or a diary, student papers, our notebooks, those are all things that we can preserve and 30, 40, even 10 years down the road, that's going to be something really interesting that people are going to want to study. Like what was life like during the 2020 pandemic? Like we think about the 1918 influenza, like this is the same thing happening. That's really interesting and I'm always a proponent for kind of like documenting your own life, which is probably why I have a blog and photography and then also just saving that for the future. from my adventure of presenting and I also decided to just pack up and put my photo stuff down. I ended up taking just a few more photos. I just wanted to get everything kind of out of the way because George and I are gonna go run some errands. I'm finally gonna go back to the UPS store and actually return the backdrop. Uh, my boss got the QR code to me today, so that's good. We're just gonna do some productive running around and all that but i wanted to share how my presentation went and it went so well it was so fun i really enjoyed like teaching or sharing my story speaking public speaking via a zoom format it was really comfortable and i just kind of got into a flow because i knew what i was saying the students seemed to really enjoy it there was a discussion going on in the chat there was a student that's actually going to my the graduate school that I went to for the same program so that was really exciting and there was some there was like one person that's actually thinking of becoming an archivist so that was really cool too and it was just really fun to share you know my journey as an archivist and just share any career tips and after like towards the end I kind of touched on uh, the importance of leveraging like all of your skills in not just 
incorporating that into your career in the history field or whatever field you choose but consider trying to find other streams of income that was something that i wanted to share because that is part of my journey as this is like archives is not the only like job that i have it's not the only way i make money because i also have photography business and youtube which is not making money right now but hopefully down the road i can monetize this platform as well i just wanted to share that that is an option and that students and anybody looking for like thinking about their future and their career should really take into consideration because that is something that i never was taught or really thought was possible for me like growing up i just thought we had to go to school go to college get a job get married have kids and that's it like there's no nuance to that so i wanted to kind of share my perspective which is pretty unique and my professor former professor like really touched on about how i have like other things going on and he really wanted me to speak to that so that's really exciting that there's an interest in that and he wanted me to share that with the students one student asked if archives is like something I want to do for the rest of my life or if I have other career like endeavors or anything and that's something that I feel like if you asked me that like four years ago I would have given you a totally different answer than I have now and I think it just like four years ago was when I like started my business and I was really thinking of leaving just my career because I wanted to be a full-time entrepreneur and start a business and not rely on the man to pay me and all of that stuff and after like actually going through my entrepreneurship journey and then 2020 happening and just everything that i've been through and and experienced between my career and different businesses and everything i've realized that i'm really content with my main income being in archives in like my professional archiving field and just having like my creative endeavors on the side as a means of just having it's a hobby but it also it provides supplemental income and i feel like i finally become like content comfortable and confident in that reality of my life for so long i just felt not good enough because i wasn't a full-time entrepreneur or blah 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 and that somehow my archival career like my professional career was holding me back from being successful or being reaching my potential or just being good enough because of all the messages i was seeing about you know the girl boss life and that's a whole another topic i'm gonna do another video on i just haven't been inspired to do it so i think this has kind of reignited my um <laughs> motivation to kind of touch on that subject because that's a whole nother whole other topic but I feel like I'm just really happy with where I am and that archives is something that I really do see myself doing for the rest of my life until retirement even if I'm like old and in retirement and want to you know volunteer my time at an archives or a library I want to do that too so it's really awesome to kind of be confident in that decision and know that I went to school and majored in something and actually started a career and I am going to be sticking in that career because I know I'm so fortunate to be one of those people because there are so many people that go to school and major in something. Sirens! Because I know that there are so many people that go to school and don't have that. They leave school and end up getting a job in something that's not related to their field at all and they end up switching careers or jobs and just aren't happy and I really am grateful that that's that I've been able to kind of stick on this tra trajectory of history as like the overarching field and yeah that's something I just wanted to share and I feel like for so long I kind of resented that fact that I love this career and I love this profession and I love all of this because of all of the just insecurities of not being good enough in terms of like being an entrepreneur like mindset issues and stuff. I just wanted to share that I feel very like content with where I am in my life right now and really grateful for how far I've come in my career. I'm going to do a different video I guess just talking specifically about this more of like a sit down coffee chat video because I know I've gotten asked to share my journey and my career journey and why I became an archivist so I'm going to do that video soon and hopefully we can spread more awareness for this field and this job because it's really important and that's one of our things as archivists is to spread awareness of what we do and who we are and why it's important to know who we are and what we do so 
yes. So now that that's all over, I hope you've enjoyed this video where you kind of see behind the scenes of being an archivist while working at home and doing a presentation and also dipping in my side hustles as well and just balancing all the things. One thing I did say during the presentation is that I like having my hands dipped in multiple things and I don't have a long attention span for one thing. So I think that's why I'm so like multi-passionate and have so many different like things going on and different like streams of income because I like doing one thing and then I like to turn that off and go to something else and switch back and forth because I just can't be focused on one thing forever. I need to be doing multiple things at once, which is something I'm finally learning to embrace and it's not a bad thing. It's just me and that's okay. So thank you for watching. Give this video a like and make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and I will see you in the next video. Bye.